it has been anticipated for a very very long time but the wait is finally over here is the maruti suzuki jimny i could have simply called it the suzuki jimny but i need to call it the maruti suzuki jimny because this is a five door model the international model is a three door so maruti has spent a lot of r and d money and effort into creating this one of course it is going to sell in india but is also going to be sent out to the other markets hello and welcome to pit stop what we have here is and i did not think that i will end up saying this a fantastic product so let's get on with the jimny the gypsy always looked extremely extremely nice the squared out design was something that really appealed to a lot of people and the jimny continues that theme of course it is the spiritual successor to the gypsy that we have in india which is essentially the second generation of the jimny globally specific to this car i think the design department needs to be given full marks it looks like nothing else uh, yes the dimensions are very small but the appeal from the design perspective is absolutely absolutely there and it's got a lot of elements going on i really like the circular led headlamps and then of course is the grill section which is characterized by these five vertical slats now one thing that i really like is the fact that there is this beautiful anthracite sort of a color for the rest of the grill section these are finished off in chrome and thankfully because of this shade the chrome is uh, digestible enough and then is my favorite part which is the bumper i know it's very controversial that a bumper can be a favorite part of the design but this thing actually gives a more robust personality to the overall look of the car and i think this has been executed very very nicely good material as well it's uh, fairly robust and very very strong and there is literally no overhang at the front so in essence it has that boxy feel to it it has that beautiful appeal that an off-roader really should have this is where the jimny is completely different to the three door international version of course it's not a simple engineering job that you cut it in the middle stretch out the chassis and weld it at both the ends and there you have it it's a five door jimny but that's definitely not the case maruti suzuki has gone through the entire pain and process of completely engineering the platform for the five door model well the effort is here to see it actually looks very very balanced and uh, we were very scared whether the five door is going to look as appealing as a three door but i think it's a job well done and the proportions are extremely balanced and then again as you move towards the rear you will see that the overhang at the back is also very well managed and it hardly exists so the approach angle the departure angle and also the brake over is very strong in this car and that's something that we will of course explore as we go along and drive this car off road in a much more serious way at the back things are fairly simple you have a side hinged door you have a spare wheel mounted on it and lights integrated into the bumpers now what that does is give the jimny a very mercedes g wagon feel because that is also a very similar design and uh, yeah you will find a lot of people saying that the jimny looks like a g wagon and uh, this is one very big contributor to that statement or that sentiment <laughs> what i don't like is this very plain very dull sort of a black plastic cover for the spare wheel i think maruti should have done something a lot more exciting over here right now the plain jean sort of a treatment does not really work and it does not have the same vibe and personality as the rest of the car so this needs to go and something more aggressive needs to come in place the moment you get inside the jimny you feel like it's back in the analog world and very rightly so the only digital bit is this infotainment screen that sits right in the middle and it is needed i think uh, because in this day and age if you don't have a touch screen if you don't have all the connectivity features and everything of that sort you will be left out but the whole treatment of the analog with this digital bit sticking out is actually not bad at all and i absolutely love the fact that uh, maruti has actually thought about a lot of very very small but very crucial things stuff like uh, the grab handles right here in front of the passenger and also the grabs on the doors they're very very tough very robust and the best thing is the design 
of the instrument panel here. It's almost like a box, but the design on the top is uh, very beautiful. It almost looks like two different housings and it just takes you back to the gypsy era. And then the font, it's all so, so analog and it's just a beautiful reminder of what the gypsy used to be, which is essentially the second generation of the Jimny itself. So the brand name was Jimny always. The moment it came to India, it became gypsy. But yes, we have the Jimny now in India officially. The rest of the things, very, very basic, very functional as a car of this nature needs to have. Just very few buttons here. You have the dials for your temperature control and fan control and stuff. And just below this is a panel of four toggle buttons, uh, two to basically operate the front windows and the other two, one is for hill descent control and the other one uh, switches off the traction. And that's where a lot of fun essentially lies. I have been throwing this car around for a fair amount of time now and I'm absolutely blown away by the width of capabilities that it offers. But on the inside, things are very basic, very functional and it's a very narrow car. Thankfully, you know, you have a rectangular footprint, it's not a square. So you get a little bit of flexibility in that way. We'll talk about the dynamic aspect of the rectangular footprint in a little while, but you have space for uh, two adults in the back and then you have a reasonably usable boot as well. But all in all, a very narrow compartment. You will definitely find yourself to be very snug. When I saw this car at the Auto Expo, I did not think that the seats were very good. I thought they were way too squishy and uh, would not really offer the right amount of support. But having driven this car now for a fair amount of time, both on-road and absolutely bashing it off-road, I have to say that I was wrong and the seats are actually pretty okay. Comfort-wise, yes, the squab could have been slightly bigger. For a tall person like me, I do find that the under-thigh support is just slightly lacking and the knees are just hanging in the middle of the air. But shorter passengers will not have any problem at all. It's the same case at the back. In fact, uh, what I have a little bit of an issue with is the back of the back seat. That I think is way too short in height and uh, it just kind of ends very abruptly in the middle of the shoulders. I think that could have been kind of worked on. It should have been a little taller. That would have given the passengers decent amount of comfort. Right now, with the way the headrest kind of just merges in and fouls with your uh, shoulder blades and also the seat back not being tall enough, that is definitely a bit of a problem. But overall, what uh, you get out of this very short footprint is actually a fairly decent cabin. It's not a very long car, it's just under four meters in length and the width is also very, very limited. But uh, the way things are done and the way Marathi has turned this out is impressive enough. And the one thing that I like the most about the cabin is the fact that this gear lever is an exposed metal. It doesn't really have a leather sort of a wrap around it. It's not something that is out of a luxury car. It's very, very functional. And I love the fact that it has a beautifully done exposed metal link that uh, you essentially then hold on to with the gear knob. And then just below it is the lever for your transfer case. And we will be using this quite a lot. That was about the cabin. Let's get going. Let's now get on with the Jimny and give it a little bit of a go. In today's day and age, even the most purposeful manufacturers are going all monocoque. For example, the Defender is now not your traditional body on ladder frame. It has gone very sophisticated in its engineering. But to see a proper body on ladder frame come out is so, so heart pleasing. And the Jimny just is an excellent example of what this construction really can do. The Jimny gets rigid axles both at the front and the back with coils of course. So all four ends are suspended on springs and uh, the axle is a very nice rigid unit. What that does is afford the Jimny capabilities like I did not think a car of this sort is going to have. 
when it comes to the mechanicals there is not a great deal to talk about because it's a very agricultural setup and there are no massive electronic gizmos going on in here it's a very simple construction it's a very simple very traditional sort of a platform and you get a good old transfer box that you can play around with a lot of you might be thinking that because the chimney is a proper offer vehicle it would have central locking differential or uh, multiple <laughs> locking differentials but that is not the case there is no locking differential over here it is all to do with the traction and how the car and its setup kind of manipulates traction in a very robust way and then of course you have traction that you can manipulate again with the transfer box We have all seen Suzuki's all grip technology applied in the Grand Vitara as well and uh, it's a little different because it gets the Select which is the middle one in the all grip range this one gets the Pro the Jimny is the only car that gets the Suzuki all grip Pro and uh, it's a bit different because while it of course as i said works based on traction most of the times you do get a physical transfer case with the uh, 2h 4h and 4 low capability we are driving on a dried up river bed and all we need is uh, the car to be in 4h so the traction is going to all four wheels very regular basic stuff but we did one particular obstacle which had a hilariously steep descent and uh, this was a very natural descent it was not manicured by the organizers in any way at all it was all very natural but the angle was just ludicrous it was almost like a vertical drop but the way we negotiated it was an absolute breeze i would say you know when you go off roading it's all very nice and slow progress but you see some very flat surfaces with some gravel thrown into the mix and you want to flow the throttle that's what we did we had one nice long stretch of road where it was nothing but loose rock and a little bit of sand here and there and we gave it the beans it was an absolute joy all you need to do was put the car into four high and just manage the throttle and the steering get the traction off and you can even slide the car uh, that's extremely beautiful and uh, yeah it just gives you a massive smile on your face when you water wading there might be a chance that the river bed or the absolute bottom is uh, fairly slippery because of of course the water flowing but also a lot more because of the moss that gets formed on the rocks but the jimny has not had any troubles so far in negotiating any of that and what surprises me even more is that we have been driving this on pretty much the stock tires this is exactly the kind of configuration that it is going to hit the market with there is no mechanical change that these cars have gone through it is the same spec the wheels and the tires are the same and it's just astonishing we've had a little bit of a straight with some bits of water puddles here and there and a route that is lined with loose rocks gravel some dips some crazy bumps here and there and i can't tell you the smile that the jimny affords you it also gives you a sense of what the coils on the jimny can really do there is an insane amount of suspension travel in fact in some of the footage you might be able to see that one end of the vehicle is completely compressed and the other end has a lot of open space so that is the amount of suspension travel that the jimny has on offer we also managed an obstacle where uh, we went and tried the hill descent control and what i really like about uh, the hill descent in this one is that it works when you're going forwards as well as when you're going back and the speed limit when you are going about in four high is 10 kilometers per hour and uh, when you are in four low it is down to 5 kilometers per hour and that's also actually uh, in some cases it feels plenty fast the jimny has an approach angle of 36 degrees and a departure angle of an absolutely crazy 50 degrees so you can definitely get this down and dirty in a big way and 
you also can be very sure that you will not get stuck in most of the situations because the breakover angle is 24 degrees. So all these numbers are very healthy. They speak of good off-road use for the Jimny, and I'm not shouting praises on it. Uh, not saying it's you know the Jimny is absolutely the best out there. No, nothing like that. But for what this car is, it is doing a crazy, crazy good job. We left the riverbed and the off-roading sections behind and we have been driving on what can easily be called as smooth tarmac surface for quite a while now. And uh, it is essentially this environment that the Jimny needs to perform really very nicely because it is going to spend almost all its time in exactly such kind of situations. While you would absolutely celebrate the Jimny for being a great off-road tool, you have to live with the fact that 99% uh, of the time, it is going to be the urban jungle that this thing is going to be navigating. And at doing that also, the Jimny is pretty all right. You know, initially I approached the Jimny with a little bit of a doubt in my head because uh, I knew that it is going to be absolutely superb off-road. But I thought that it might just be extremely compromised on-road. But that has not been the case and I'm genuinely extremely happy about that. Remember the long travel suspension that I spoke about when we were doing the off-road trail? That comes into its own over here when you apply the car on tarmac as well. Yes, there is a great amount of suspension travel. That's great because it absorbs all the bumps and everything very nicely. But what also matters is the way this thing has been damped. The overall suspension quality is really nice and this thing will drive over everything that you encounter in a very traditional city sort of a setup without any hassle. The engine, well, it's the tried and tested uh, 1.5 litre petrol K15B essentially makes about 104 PS and 134 Newton meters. And both of these figures come pretty high up in the RPM. The power figure comes in at about uh, 6,000 RPM and the peak torque is delivered at about 4,000 RPM. So you will have to rev up the engine a fair amount uh, if you need to get the excitement value out of it. But really just let it be and uh, it is not really going to be something that you'll complain about per se. We have been driving in uh, pretty hilly areas and uh, the engine has not really felt out of breath at all. Yes, you have to sometimes downshift to really get into the torque band again, but that's something that you anyway do with all the other cars as well. So it's nothing that the Jimny is highlighted for at being uh, wrong or at being uh, lacking on. It's just that you get the momentum going and you know which gear can do what and you're completely sorted. So essentially, these narrow hilly sections should be a second and third gear affair, with hairpin bends definitely needing you to downshift, sometimes even into first. But the engine and gearbox, uh, they're mated to each other pretty nicely. And uh, it's only the shift quality because it feels a little rubbery and a little rough sometimes that you will kind of just not appreciate the gear shift quality all that much. But really, you know, when you start using it uh, on a daily basis, as much as you uh, will go through the gearbox, it's going to grow on you. I think uh, there is a little bit of this agricultural personality that you will have to enjoy almost. But talking of living with this car on a daily basis, uh, you will need to definitely convince yourself that, uh, yeah, you've bought into a bit of a compromise. When was the last time that you saw the gear stick <laughs> moving about like this? Any modern car uh, worth its weight has done away with this. But the Jimny just brings back the old school nostalgia in such beautiful ways that it's enjoyable. Anyway, back to the practicality of the car and uh, yes, it is not the most practical cabin. It is no doubt functional and uh, the off-road enthusiasts are going to love it. But 
a regular family of four, they will think that uh, it's not the most ideal affair in here. Uh, there are no storage spaces to speak of, at least usable ones. And uh, even the door pocket at the front is there as an obligation. There are no rear door pockets at all. And you hardly have any practical cubby holes to make use of in here. So you will have to think hard and long about how do you plan to store things here and there if you're planning to go on a nice long road trip. On safety, again, the basic safety net is all there. You have the regular array of ABS, EBD, ESC and hill hold, hill descent, all that stuff is there. So the fundamentals are all there. It's all in place and that is exactly what this car is. This car is all about having the fundamentals in place and nothing more and nothing less. Is it everything for everyone? Not really, not even close to that. But it is a lot for a lot of people and it is everything for a very select few. The Jimny is a laugh riot on wheels. It is a fantastic, fantastic machine. And with that, it is time for us to wrap this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to connect with us, just go on any of these social media pages and drop in a line to us. Before going, as always, I urge you to be very, very responsible whenever you're on the road, be it on feet or on wheels. My name is Ashish, signing off. I will see you in seven. Take care. Bye-bye.